So what exactly is the secret to finding purpose after our military service? We're going to dive into that. You know, I, I would just say that the military is brilliant at teaching uh, those who join the military, whether they're male or female, on how to find and well, how to find or even discover true mission, purpose, identity. Uh, all that is given to us. It's like spoon fed. We embrace it. We know who we are. We know what our purpose is. We know what we're going to do the next day. And then we get out and suddenly all of that is stripped away. Uh, and our guest today, uh, former Navy SEAL, retired Lieutenant Commander Tim Cruikshank. And I know you guys have heard this voice over and over again, or at least this name over and over again, is going to reveal how he actually found the secret to his purpose after service. So welcome to this edition of the Military Wire with Mike Schindler. I am, in fact, Mike Schindler, and this is the podcast where we interview some of America's most elite men and women who have served this country in hopes that you, our viewer, can get an aha moment that you can apply to your own life. So you guys know that every episode, I give a shout out to our sponsor, Bone Frog Cellars and Bone Frog Coffee, because I love it and I love the purpose behind it. And uh Today, we have the founder of the company, Lieutenant Commander Tim Cruikshank, CEO of Bonefrog Cellars and Coffee. Tim, welcome to the show, brother. Mike, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. To talk to you. I, listen, I'm honored to be here uh, on the show with you. Let me put it that way. My show, but I'm, I'm, I'm like uh, excited to be with you, Tim. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so I, I want to I dive into your company because your company is just going to the stratosphere uh, which is really cool. But I know you had a journey getting there. Um, and, and before we dive into the purpose piece, why don't you just kind of set the stage for our viewer a little bit about your background? Why'd you join the service? And, you know, it, why the heck did you ever become a SEAL? Why don't we start there? Yeah. So, you know, I think for everybody, um, they have different reasons for joining the service. For me, I I get asked this question a lot. And I am a overly patriotic person. I really, I love my country. And when I look at the flag and I hear the national anthem, it actually, it gives me chills. And, you know, even now I, I get a lump in my throat thinking about all the people that I served with and, and all that when I hear the national anthem. I, I think, you know, young men, they, they join the service for one reason or another. Part of it, you know, becoming a SEAL was, to challenge myself and to do something that was extremely difficult, but really I wanted to be, I wanted to position myself in a, um, a, a job that I could do the best that I could, that, um, you know, really challenged every part of me, both mentally and physically. And, and that's why I did it. Yeah. So talk to us and I get it now, like, you know, a, a lot of the fleets, the military, um, everybody's trained up in certain ways. You guys are especially trained up in multiple ways. Um, so every day is a challenge. You guys have some sayings that I think are pretty well known, like embrace the suck or the only easy day was yesterday. Right. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of the fleet does not even understand what that means. Right. How did you, so you bought into the mission and purpose of being part of this elite force. Um, that whole time, I think it was what, a 25 year career. Is that right, Tim? Right. Yeah. So through that entire time, did you ever give thought of, geez, what am I going to do after this? Yes, I did. Um, I think from a very early age, when I first came in, I was looking at what guys were doing when they got out. And for me, I was a corpsman, I was the medic. And, uh, you know, looking ahead and seeing guys getting out and what they're getting into. I went and I got, you know, uh, my medical degree. And, you know, I knew that I liked seeing patients and I liked helping people. I'm a very service oriented type of person. And so for me, that's what I found myself kind of gravitating towards was medicine after I got out. And I'm doing that right now. And I think, you know, looking back on it, I had no idea, no idea I was going to get into doing coffee and wine and, and what that all meant until, you know, I got out and um, 
that really came to me at my retirement ceremony when I was standing up at the podium giving my talk. I retired out of uh, a joint command at Fort Bragg on an army base. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Navy retirements, as you know, are really big, fancy, traditional uh, events, right? With the cross swords and dress uniforms and all this stuff. And here I was standing up there giving this talk to all these people in the audience that, you know, were part of my 25 year career, a lot of shared experiences and things like that. And, you know, as I was looking out at everybody, Mike, I'm looking them in the eye and I'm, I'm talking, but I'm having all these memories come back to me of, of things that we had done together. At that point, I think we had been at war for 16 years and a lot of shared experiences and a lot of loss. And mm-hmm. I had this idea as I was talking of what I wanted to do. And um, I remember going home that night and telling Liz, my wife, about what my idea was. I wasn't sure how it was all going to come together, but I knew that as I retired and transitioned into being a civilian, there was something significant that I needed to do. And I felt a calling to do uh, to talk about the memories of those that gave their lives, my teammates, my friends. And I had an idea, but it, 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 it took some time to kind of come together and, and how that was all gonna be play out as it is right now. Yeah, so I wanna talk about that. So you had this, this feeling or this, uh, this nudge, I'm gonna call it a nudge, that your, your service to our country wasn't done even though you're standing at the ceremony. Talk to me a little bit about the transition, because I know sometimes, not sometimes, often, uh, those of us who transition uh, trip over ourselves, mm. um, trying to figure out, you know, what are we yeah. supposed to do? We're so used to making money or having the money come. We don't have to worry about it. We don't right. have to think about it. And we don't have to think about a lot of things. Like, I don't even have to think about getting a dentist because, you know, the Navy <laughs> right. takes care of that, right? I mean, all this right. stuff taken care of. Uh, yeah, so... W- Tell us a little bit about your transition. I mean, I've told people, listen, I transitioned and I went through 14 jobs trying to figure it out, right? I I mean, that was my experience. How was your transition? So when you're getting ready to get out, and I know a lot of the listeners, if they're prior military, are going to relate to this as well as you, Mike. And, you know, we've talked about this before, but everybody says your transition is going to be difficult and all that, but you don't really know why until you go through it you know they send you through taps i think really it's a check in the box they yeah here's your transition off you go now well for those of us that are service oriented and i think a lot of people that serve in the military are very it's part of our genetics who we are we like to serve people you get out and it's it's different. Uh, the civilian lifestyle is much different than what we experienced while we were in. So, you know, I was used to camaraderie, brotherhood, yeah, teamwork, people that had my back that I trusted with my life in a lot of cases with my life. And here I get out and it's the complete opposite. And like you, I went through multiple jobs and I was just almost crushed by the lack of trust and the the selfishness that I was experiencing from people that I worked with that really were just out for themselves. And it took a long time to, to overcome that, that there's this other sector of people out there that really don't care about anybody but themselves. And that was hard because what we had in the Navy is not what I experienced when I got out. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, for me, what made the transition difficult, as well as kind of that loss of sense of purpose. Mm. Right. Yeah. We yeah. used to have the, I, this tremendous self uh, sense of purpose and what I was doing. And it was very rewarding because I did it with these people that were self starters and had grit and they're hardworking. And we did it together with this level of trust that um, is hard to find now, honestly. So talk, talk to us a little bit, Tim, about 
the so you get out you get a job right you get a couple jobs mm -hmm. you've got all the distractions or all the demands mm -hmm. of you know a job uh how did you what was your secret to finding your true purpose i mean you had that nudge at the podium but now you're you're going through iterations of different employment cycles how did you, I mean, talk to us a little bit about that. At what moment was there, there was cataclysmic moment that you said, I, I just got to, you know, shoot, I'm just pulling chocks and, you know, wheels up and I'm going for it. Yeah, I mean, how did you land on the secret or how did you discover the secret to this is what I'm going to do? Mm. That's not an easy question to answer. Really, you yeah. know, it started on the podium with the idea. Yeah. And then I slowly started working on it and taking notes and fleshing it out and um, doing a lot of research and and keeping a journal and a binder and and working through it. And then finally, one day I said, you know what, I am going to file uh, my business name as an LLC and I'm just going to get this thing going. I, I just have to. Put the next foot forward and things will fall in place so i did that in 2018 and i kept working on all this stuff but in special operations um you know when we don't know things we find somebody that is an expert in that field the subject matter expert um and i did that um both in coffee and wine because I felt those were conversation pieces, um, these beverages. So, you know, we get together to talk, business meetings, friendships, things like that. Let's meet at a coffee shop, sit down and we talk. Wine is the same exact thing and brings people together for dinners and get togethers and, and sharing stories. And it all just kind of started coming together. And um, I found those subject matter experts that could help me and mentor me and, and teach me the things that I didn't know. And it, it's difficult. We get out of the military and we have a, a very defined set skill set. But what we don't realize and what I hope your listeners realize is the military has taught us so much more leadership, can do attitude, never quit, yeah. discipline, you know, all those things that help you in business because it's no different. Um, you know, those skill sets that you have that help drive you forward uh, to do these things because they're not easy. Yeah. It, it, what I love about it is that you just took the first step, right? I, I think yeah. many people just sit on the sideline and they know that they've got to do something, but they don't take that first step. And what you're saying is you've just got to take that first step. And you yeah. attribute that to some of your training because I, I know, you know, we've had other, you know, individuals on the show, you know, Mark Devine and, you know, a few others uh, that just say, you know, you're looking for the micro win on some days, right? Like if I can just get through the next 10 seconds, yeah, know, that's a win. So was it part of your training? Just say, I've got to do X and just do it. Or do you think, do you think everybody possesses that? So I'll share a couple things. Uh, that helped me when one, when I was going through buds, I had a, a friend that was a seal that gave me some advice. He said, some days, you know, are going to be easier than ever others. But when you find yourself in a situation where that you think is almost unbearable, sometimes you've got to take it in five minute intervals, one minute, 30 seconds, but test yourself, go give yourself 30 seconds. If I can make it through the next 30 seconds, and you're okay, you can do another 30 seconds. It didn't kill you. And they put you in situations in training where you honestly believe they're trying to kill you. Like, I'm going to die right now. I'm like, ah, all I have to do is just put one foot in front of the other, make it through the next 30 seconds. You're like, I did it. I yeah. accomplished it. So when Mark Devine talks about micro wins, I think that's really what he's talking about is these these little steps, just put one foot in front of the other. You can do it. Yeah. You just have to make it through that next interval. And I, I want to share one other story. So I think everybody's heard of log PT. They give you the big telephone poles, yeah. right? Yeah. It, it's meant to build teamwork, but it's also meant to pull out of you all these characteristics. It's a learning experience. And one day they had us take a telephone pole 
we're all wet and sandy, 20 foot soft sand berm, okay? Boat crew, seven people, get on the, the um, telephone pole, laying on your backs, and we want you to push this up this 20 foot soft sand berm together. As you can imagine, one side would be pushing more than the other, or somebody would start sliding and then the arguing starts. You're not trying hard enough and pushing this thing up. And the instructors would put one person in charge and have them lead it. Inevitably, you get a quarter of the way halfway up and slide all the way back to the bottom. Guys are getting frustrated. You've got all the sand and everything chafing you. It hurts. You're yeah. tired, all this stuff. I learned so much during that evolution, not only about the people around me, but of myself. And I use that analogy in business all the time because it's no different than pushing that log halfway up the berm and sliding all the way back down to the bottom. And the frustration you feel and the finger pointing and the blame and all these things can be almost overwhelming, but you take it step by step, the little micro wins and you push that log and eventually we got that log up to the top and we looked at each other and we understood what it took, the teamwork, the leadership, the uh, never quit attitude to get it there. And I relate that to business all the time. I, I love that story because you also shared that you had failure along the way. And maybe maybe we don't call it failure maybe we call it setbacks right where you had setbacks and that's part of the process yes and so not only did you have setbacks but tim were there things that you did um where you were scared doing it like oh my gosh i gotta take this next step but i'm scared as hell taking this next step were there moments like that too of course and even you know on i'll use an example on the obstacle course you have to uh flip yourself up uh three times on these platforms to get up, I think it's a, like a 30 foot tower with a rope that goes down and they transition you from first phase where you're doing it underneath the rope to getting on top of the rope and sliding down, laying on top of it, commando style, right? Getting on top of that rope at that height, you know, people fall off there all the time and break their leg or break all kinds of stuff, you know? Getting on that rope, wet and sandy, because a bunch of guys have gone down it, it's hard to hold on to, um, is, is one thing, you know, when you're a student, building yeah. that confidence, um, going under an aircraft carrier uh, with your scuba gear on pitch black and not knowing where you're at, all these things lead into and prepare you for combat, which is so much worse, but there's all these things, uh, situations that they put you in that prepare your mind and confidence to get you to that point. And yeah, there's, there's times there's probably more failure before there is success, but you've got to go through the process to get there. Um, the end point, uh, to build that confidence that you can do it. Yes. Yeah. I love that. And I, I think what you're saying is, uh, don't quit. Like if you've got a, a right. vision, if you've got a dream, if you've got something that's just nine on your soul that, you know what, I was placed here for this time to do this thing. Uh, it's not necessarily going to be easy. Uh, you'll probably have setbacks. You'll probably be scared. Uh, right. Sometimes you won't, you won't even know what it looks like in front of you because you have no clarity in front of you. You know where you want to go. You're clear on where you want to go. You just right. don't know how you're going to get there, Right. When I was a BUDS instructor, you know, so on the flip side of things, when I was a BUDS instructor, I would tell the students, you can do more than you think you can. There is no such thing as I can't, just an unwillingness to try harder. Get up there, overcome your fear and do it. You might fail, but you get right back up there and do it again, do it again until you succeed. And then you know you can do it and it builds that confidence to go and do the next thing. Yeah, see, I love that. I, I want to transition to your company because uh, we could talk about this stuff, you know, failures and successes in business right. and all day long because I just love that stuff. But I want to talk about your company now, Bonefrog uh, Coffee and Bonefrog Cellars, which is just growing rapidly, uh, under yeah. five years old. But uh, I mean, gosh, taking the world by storm. 
I say, uh, I, you know, I have it in the back here. People always ask me, is, is this is this a Zoom background? The answer is no, it actually is real, but we got your coffee, you know, you got, you, you got your premium wine, you know, right here. I want yeah. people to see this, you know, this, this one's actually signed. It's a signed bottle. You can't, nobody can have that one. Um, so talk to us a little bit about this. I joke with people. I say, Tim was brilliant because he, he helps you wake up in the morning and he helps you relax into your evening. I mean, that's right. It, 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 it really is about that. And it's designed to be fellowship. So tell us a little bit about your company and it's a mission driven company. So share with the viewers why it's mission driven. Sure. Uh, thank you for showing the image. I think, you know, when people see that it's a very striking image, a yeah. friend of mine, Keith Kamura was the original uh, person that drew the bone frog back in the early nineties. He was also a seal corpsman. And when he passed away, the bone frog became this kind of iconic image in the SEAL teams that represented those that gave their lives for our freedom and our American way of life. And I took Keith's image and I redrew it to honor him. Um, and I changed things a little bit. I put the trident in the pelvis of the frog. I changed the head to look more like a Navy anchor, made those changes. But when I started this company, I named it Bone Frog because it honors them. When I was standing at that podium, I wanted to find a way that honored the legacy of those who gave their lives. And um, I think that that does that. The bone frog comes from the Navy frogman. The frogman was the old underwater demolition teams of World War II. They were the ones that cleared the beaches in Normandy in the South Pacific. The Navy frogman. And that's why Keith drew the bone frog to represent those that passed away. My calling and what I want to do is to share that with America so everybody knows what the bone frog is and start talking about and telling the stories of those that gave their, those people that gave their lives. I, I don't want them to have died in vain. I want people to know their names. I want people to know the history and the heroic acts and the sacrifice because it's not just those seals that died. It's who they left behind. So those gold star families, the moms, the wives, the kids that still sacrifice and suffer today because they're missing their, their husband, their dad, their cousin, their uncle. In doing that, with those labels and telling the stories on our websites and when we talk to people, I also wanted to give back. I think there's a philanthropic side to this whole thing that with the sale of each one of our products, we give back a percentage to the foundations that support the Naval Special Warfare community and all those things that I was just talking about, the disabled veterans, the kids scholarships, the maybe a retired SEAL that's in crisis, the active duty, the wives that are trying to keep their heads above water when their husbands are, are deployed, right? We don't think about them, but there's wives out there with, with kids that are all by themselves, like a single mother that, that are struggling and need help. Those are the kind of things that we're doing. And it's, it's that service that um, I'm giving back that I continue to serve, even though I'm retired uh, from the Navy. It's kind of my second mission is the way I, I look it. at it. Yeah, I love it. I, it. So with every purchase, there's a percentage that goes back to, you know, one of the special warfare, you know, organizations. Yeah. Um, and I think you rotate through those. So not only can people get a, a premium product because it is premium, um, both on the coffee and the wine side, I, I, I tell people your wines are rated over 90 plus points. Yeah. Um, it, your coffee is a premium bean. It tastes amazing. Um, so how, how do people find you, Tim? Where can they learn more about uh, bone frog? Where can they follow you? How do they, how do they, how do they get a hold of you? So we predominantly sell online. Uh, you can go to our website, and look um, at bonefrog-coffee.com, bonefrog-coffee.com, or bonefrogsellers.com. You can order from the website, and if you subscribe, you get a 5% discount, and then that can come to you on a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. I will say that when we created these products, Mike, um, we wanted to create something at a level, a quality that represented the community that I come from. We partnered uh, coffee wise with one of the most iconic coffee makers here in the Seattle area that started the uh, coffee craze back in the 70s. 
Uh, Dave Stewart was the original owner of Seattle's Best Coffee. Um, he battled it out with Howard Schultz there for quite some time back in the 70s. Dave Stewart, um, tremendous human being, loves mm. his country, loves the military and what it stands for. And when we talked to him about what we were trying to do, remember I talked about needing a subject matter expert. We found Dave yeah. Stewart. He helps us and mentors us. Uh, helps us create our blends, has really been instrumental in creating a coffee line that is rich and bold, but smooth finish, doesn't have that burnt bitter taste that other coffee companies may have. <laughs> and it's same, you know, same thing with our wine. We found a wine partner who is at the top of his game, uh, is currently the, the, president of the Washington Wine Association. He's very well known in this state. And uh, same kind of thing. When we reached out to him and he heard what we wanted to do, jumped on board um, and really has been a, a tremendous partner in helping us create the wine that you have back there that, you know, almost all of them are rated over 90 plus points. They're fantastic. People love them. And I think, you know, people are nervous in, in, uh, in trying things, but what I find is, you know, they'll, they'll buy one bag of coffee, they dip their toe in, or they'll buy one bottle of wine. And the next thing you know, you see them buy a case of wine or, uh, you yeah. know, multiple pounds of coffee. And, you know, we know we're doing something right when they do that. So, yeah. Well, I mean, your company is just growing and I love that. And oh, it's, I'm going to encourage yeah. going crazy, Mike. Yeah. Well, it's so good. It's so good. I, I, Tim, I just want to say thank you for being on the Military Wire. It's uh, you and I talk often. Uh, I, I do my best to brag about your coffee and your wine everywhere I go, no matter where I'm at in the country, because it is that good. But beyond just being that good, it's good for a great reason, because it's helping support the families of those who have served, have fallen in service, or maybe you're just struggling and trying to get up. Um, you know, Hollywood, I think, makes your uh, uh, elite teams look amazing, like there's never any problems. But at the end of the day, we're all human. And sometimes we need a hand up. And I love that you are giving those families a hand up. Um, it's it's just brilliant. So, Tim, I just want to say thank you for being on the Military Wire. Thank you for having me. And I will say for anybody that's out there listening, you know, we would love for you to be part of our team join us in what we're doing and helping give back. And, and especially during the holiday season right now, you can not only go to one of our websites and order our products, they make great Christmas gifts and stocking stuffers and know that with each product that you're buying and sending out to your friends, you're also helping a military family or a military individual in need. And you're joining a, a team of people with a higher purpose. We even put it right on the back of our bags um, God country team, because those are our priorities, uh, as a company and what we believe in, um, both morally and ethically. And we want you to join what we're doing. I love it. Well, thank you, Tim. Well, and for those of you, just be sure that you check out Tim's websites, uh, bonefrog-coffee.com and bonefrogsellers.com. Be sure that you check those out. And for those of you who are looking to discover your new mission, purpose, identity after service, be sure to visit us at operationmilitaryfamily.com and uh, we'll get you started on that pathway. And maybe you'll discover the next big thing uh, like Tim did that has just taken the world by stratosphere. So Tim, again, thanks for being on the Military Wire. Mike, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it.